Okay, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us at the Chemical Engineering Subject Admissions Webinar. It's great to have you all um, here with us today. Uh, my name is Catriona and I'm the School Liaison Officer um, at Downing College and I'm going to be um, hosting the webinar for you. Um, so why are we running this webinar? Um, so obviously um, you're all interested in studying um, chemical engineering and so the purpose of this webinar is to help you understand um, how to apply for this course um, at Cambridge and also give you more detail about the course at Cambridge so you can decide if it is right um, for you and hopefully that will help you all um, to decide if it is and then hopefully we'll see some of you um, in the future. So what are we going to um, cover today? Um, I'm going to give the first talk and I'm going to cover the admissions um, process and give you a brief overview of that. Um, then I'm going to hand over to the Director of Studies for Chemical Engineering at Downing, which is Dr Cameron Yunus, and he's going to give you an overview of the chemical engineering um, so, um, topic at um, Cambridge. Um, Dr. Cameron Eunice is also the admissions tutor at um, Downing College, um, so he will be able to answer any admissions questions, um, as well as myself, during the Q&A at the end. And then we've got um, a current student um, with us, Polina, and she's going to give you an overview of what it's like um, to study chemical engineering at Cambridge and at Downing, and she's in her second year. Uh, so that's going to be the structure of the webinar, and we'll have a Q&A at the end, and we'll be finished by half past five. So a couple of things to remember, um, we are recording um, the session and we're going to put it on our YouTube channel so you'll be able to watch it back if you want to. Um, there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, uh, please use this instead of the chat box if you have any questions um, for us and we will um, answer all of those questions in the uh, Q&A at the end, um, so please do be putting any questions you have um, in there. So what is Downing College? So we're hosting the event um, for you today, but what actually are we? Um, so we're one of the uh, 31 Cambridge colleges that make up the University of Cambridge. And you can see our site in the centre of Cambridge um, there. So a little bit of history about um, the college. Uh, so we were founded in 1800 and we were the 17th college out of those 31 um, to be founded. And we have around 450 um, undergraduate students and that places us as a medium sized um, college. And we take around 120 um, new students um, each year. And this is for all subjects um, taught at the University of Cambridge. And of course, importantly today, uh, chemical engineering. So I'm now going to give you an overview of um, the admissions process then. So what am I going to cover in uh, this part of the webinar? I'm going to talk about the role of the departments um, and the colleges. So obviously we're talking about the chemical engineering department, we're talking about Downing College and other colleges and then the university. So how, how does that break down? I'm going to give you an overview of the admissions process, as we said, talk a little bit about admissions assessments, personal statements and interviews in a little bit more detail. So, um, when you become a student at Cambridge, you are part of uh, the University of Cambridge, you're part of a department, in this case the Chemical Engineering Department, and then you're part of a um, college, so for Polina's case she's part of Downing College. But what are they actually responsible for? So the department um, sets all the course content. They set the lectures, your seminars, um, any practicals, any projects you're doing, um, any assessments and exams are all set by the chemical engineering department, regardless of what college um, you attend. And then the university are the ones that award um, the degrees. So at the end of your course, um, you're awarded a University of Cambridge degree rather than a um, rather than a Downing College or one of the other colleges um, degree. And the careers advice service is also available for all students, um, regardless of their department or their college. So then what do the colleges do? Well, the colleges actually um, select and admit the students on behalf of the departments uh, for all subjects. So if you're interested in applying uh, to study chemical engineering at Cambridge, you have to choose um, your college early on and the college you apply to will then um, interview you and the whole um, application process will happen through the college. 
And then if you're successful um, in your application and become a student, um, the college then provides um, academic and pastoral um, support. So you'll have a director of studies um, at Downing for chemical engineering. Um, as I've mentioned, this is Dr. Cameron Eunice. You'll have a personal tutor. This is um, another academic within the college um, who is not part of your department. So you can come to them with any uh, department issues or any kind of welfare issues. Um, the college also has a college nurse and a college chaplain uh, that you can go to as well for uh, pastoral um, care and support. The college then provides um, the accommodation, so all of Downing's uh, accommodation is on site on that picture I showed you earlier. Um, and then there's dining and recreation facilities as well. Now, the only part of um, teaching that you do within the college um, is uh, supervisions. So these are small group teaching sessions um, and Polina will uh, talk more about them um, in her talk later on. Um, but this is the only part that happens within the college and all the rest of the teaching happens within the department. So the application uh, process then, hopefully you are interested um, in applying uh, to study chemical engineering um, with us. So the first thing you need to do is choose your course and hopefully um, after hearing uh, Dr. Cameron Eunice's talk, um, you'll be set on chemical engineering. Um, then you need to choose um, your college. Um, so any of the 31 um, colleges um, you can apply to, um, but there are a few um, exceptions. So some of them are mature colleges, um, some of them are postgraduate colleges, and some of them only accept uh, female applicants. Um, and not every, uh, every college will offer every course. Um, but as long as it kind of ticks all those boxes, you can apply to any of them and you can apply um, to Downing, um, or you can make an open application. So this is where um, you say you don't mind what college you are uh, placed in and a computer randomly allocates you to a college. You then need to check um, any admissions test um, deadlines um, that you need to sign up for, and your school needs to sign you up um, for these because um, for chemical engineering, there is um, an assessment that you need to do um, in advance, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. So you need to make sure you have signed up for this test. Um, then there is the UCAS application. Um, so you apply by the 15th of October, along with your other four university uh, subject um, choices as well. Um, and then at Cambridge, we ask you for some additional questionnaires. Um, so there's nothing to worry about. It's just um, more information that we would like from you um, that isn't in your UCAS um, application. Um, there isn't any written work uh, for the chemical engineering course. So you don't need to worry about that, um, but you would then be sitting your um, admissions assessment. And then you may be invited um, to interview. If you are, this will happen within the first three weeks in December and be um, at the college um, that you applied to or were allocated to if you made an open application. And then everyone, regardless of their subject um, or college that they've applied to, finds out um, in the middle of January um, on the same day whether they've been um, successful in their application, um, whether they've been uh, picked by another college um, and offered a place by them, or whether you've been unsuccessful in your application. So there's a lot of stages to the application um, process. So what do we actually use uh, to assess your application? So we consider every part of your application and we don't look at one part um, on its own. We look at your whole application holistically um, and there's all of that on the screen um, there that we are looking at. Um, so it's important not to uh, focus too much on uh, one area more than another and just do your best at every um, step of the application um, process. And we do look at um, people as individuals as well. So within that, what are we looking for? So we really want to see your academic ability and potential. That's what we want to see coming through at every step in the application process. We want to see that you've got a genuine interest in that subject um, because you're going to be studying it um, for three years. We want to see that you're suitable for that course. 
Um, we are also looking to make sure you do have the right subject requirements, and I'll go on to those in a second. But it's important for me to say that we're not looking at your school or your background or any extracurricular activities that you've done, and um, they're unrelated um, to your subject. So subject requirements then. Um, Dr Cameron Yunus will go into more detail about um, the subject requirements and the different routes that you can take uh, into chemical engineering at um, Cambridge. Um, but briefly, you can either um, go via engineering or you can go via natural sciences. And if you choose to go via the engineering route, um, physics, chemistry and maths A level or equivalent in IB um, or other qualification um, are compulsory. And if you choose to go by natural sciences, chemistry and maths and another science A level um, are, um, are compulsory. And we'd be looking for students um, to have two A stars and an A in their A levels or uh, 41 to 43 points um, if you're doing IB. If you're doing Scottish hires or another qualification, um, just go to the website that's on the screen and you can find out what the conversion um, would be for you. So I thought we'd just quickly go into a bit more detail about some of the areas in the application process um, that people get worried about. Um, so personal statements. So your personal statement is part of your UCAS application and goes to all five um, universities. It's 4,000 characters or 47 lines of text and it's whichever one you um, hit first. If you're struggling to imagine how long that is, it's sort of about a page of um, A4 uh, typed writing, just to give you a rough idea. And it really is just a chance for you to tell the university um, why you want to study that subject and why you'd be good at it and why we should choose you. Um, so it is really important for universities that don't interview. It's the only opportunity um, they get to hear um, from you and why they should choose you. Um, but obviously for us, we do interview, but we are looking um, to see your academic ability and potential and your subject interest coming through in your personal statement. Um, so I said that we're not interested in your extracurricular activities, um, but we are interested in your supercurricular activities. Um, so this might be a term you're familiar with, it might not. Um, so supercurricular refers to anything that you've done outside of your school curriculum that is academic in nature. Um, so if you have... Um, watch some TED talks, listen to some podcasts, um, read some um, journal articles, anything like that, uh, that is academic in nature, that is uh, building your interest in the subject. Um, we're really interested in that. And so please do put um, what you've been learning about outside the classroom in your personal statement. And there's a few examples there on the board of different things um, that you can be looking into. So a successful personal statement then is going to give us specific evidence and examples of your areas of interest and your achievement. So why is it that you're interested in chemical engineering and why is it that you want to do the course? And as I just said, we want to see that you've gone beyond your school curriculum, so beyond your um, A-level equivalent subjects. And, you know, you've learned about something that you're interested in and have you gone into that in more detail in your own time? And we would expect two thirds of it um, to be subject um, based. So admissions assessments, then I mentioned this briefly earlier. Um, so there is an admissions assessment that you need to sit for chemical engineering and you either sit the um, engineering admissions assessment or the natural sciences admissions assessment um, based on which route you've applied um, for. Uh, so you have to choose which route and you're applying via at the beginning when you put it on your UCAS application um, to us and then you will sit either test depending which way um, you would like to um, go into chemical engineering. And there are practice papers um, online that you can have a look at for those. So the interview process then, so this is the final stage of the um, application and it's the one most people uh, probably get the most worried about. So interviews take place in the first three weeks of December um, and they'll be conducted by the college. You'll typically have um, two interviews with two people um, on the panel and they'll be around 20 uh, to 30 minutes each. And the interviewers will be um, 
uh, tutors or academics um, from uh, the engineering or chemical engineering and natural sciences um, subjects. And your whole interview will be primarily um, academic focus. So focusing on um, either engineering or natural sciences. So what you can expect is um, a discussion. Interviews are more of a discussion uh, rather than a sort of test. Um, so we want to, we might talk to you about recent academic work. We might talk to you about any wider reading that you've done and your wider interests, any work experience potentially if it's relevant. Um, issues that are happening in the wider world and um, that relate to um, your subject. And then you might be given um, a scenario question and. Um, asked to apply your existing knowledge um, to this new situation. So you wouldn't be expected to know the exact right answer, but they'd expect you to use uh, stuff that you already know and apply it uh, to the situation and see the sort of connection. Um, and you might be given sort of um, a graph or some um, scientific problems or other um, material as well with that. Um, so I think often students do say um, that interviews are more like a mock supervision. Uh, so those small group teaching sessions um, that I mentioned before, um, they are more like that um, than an interview. So a couple of frequently asked questions then. Um, gap years are absolutely fine. You can apply for deferred entry. Um, and if you do have any extenuating circumstances, um, there is a space for this, um, for you to tell uh, the college about this. Um, so please do let us know if there's anything that has impacted um, you and might impact your um, application. Even if you're unsure, um, it's better to let us know um, than not. So thank you all uh, for listening. I'm now gonna hand over uh, to Dr. Cameron Yunus, who's gonna talk to you more um, about the chemical engineering course. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Katrina, uh, for, for, for the introduction. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cameron Yunus. Uh, I'm uh, an admissions tutor at Downing College uh, and a fellow at the College for, for Chemical Engineering. Uh, I've been working at Cambridge now for uh, over 15, 16 years, and I'm one of the members of staff in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology. I'm going to try and give you a, a, a sort of a an overview, uh, a brief presentation on uh, the chemical engineering and biotechnology department, and more importantly about the chemical engineering undergraduate course, which which is uh, on um, which is uh, which is available for undergraduates to study at Cambridge. So first of all, um, let's talk a little bit about what chemical engineering is. Well, chemical engineering is a very broad discipline, and and if you actually go to the department website you'll notice that the, the academic staff are made up of uh, academics from various different disciplines, from mathematicians to physicists, from biologists, biotechnologists, from chemical engineers, traditional engineers and, and chemists, and even material scientists. So it's a very broad discipline. But generally speaking, chemical engineering is all about uh, learning uh, about how to produce chemical products on an industrial scale. And that's what traditionally chemical engineering has always been about, is looking at how you can develop processes to scale up production of a range of different types of products that we see in today, that we use in our daily use at home and, and in work and in, and in various different environments and how they can be produced on an industrial scale. So on that note, the next slide is really trying to emphasize how chemical engineering is, is a very broad uh, discipline. So chemical engineering is all about seeing how you can take molecules and materials or starting materials, such as solid liquids and gases, uh, pure mixtures, natural or synthetic materials and organic materials, and how you can actually take these raw materials and actually then put them through a range of different processes. Um, so to produce a range of different types of products. So seeing how you can take these materials and how they can then be used, be the, can be used to produce products such as bulk chemicals or fine chemicals, pharmaceuticals, polymers, metals. These are just examples. Even uh, things like your consumer goods that you see in your local supermarket, from shampoos and uh, shower gels to toothpastes. These are all processes which chemical engineering is involved in in trying to see how they can be produced on a mass scale. 
more importantly, uh, chemical engineering is all about how you can produce food, some uh, products which uh, consumers would use, um, uh, drinks, uh, and, and also uh, they're all focused around energy. How do we produce our energy? What processes we can use and how can they be sustainable? So to be able to, to, to deliver on these broad range of products and chemical engineering as a discipline works on teaching you on, on the processes involved in carrying out um, uh, various types of chemical synthesis, or biosynthesis or separation processes to produce um, the range of products that we see today and we use in, in, in our supermarkets. So it's, it's, a, it's a discipline which is looking at things happening, uh, taking uh, raw materials, uh, going through a range of different processes to produce products which are of our use on our daily use every day. Um, just to give you an example, um, a range of types of uh, processes that, that have to be developed by chemical engineers to produce food. To give you an example of that uh, is, is your, your typical chocolate bar. You know, if you were to, to bite in your chocolate bar, you notice that the chocolate uh, actually has, uh, has the right type of consistency and taste, and it, and it actually melts in your mouth. So it has a right kind of melting point. And if you look at the study, if you study chocolate carefully, you notice that chocolate actually can crystalline to different types of crystalline states. And the one that we actually really like enjoy eating is of a specific crystalline state. So you need to think about the process used to produce that chocolate to have that specific crystalline state to give you that consistency, that taste, that correct melting point, which, uh, which then allows the chocolate to melt in your mouth and not while you're holding it in your hand, for example. Um, the other thing that chemical engineers are, are very focused on is the environment seeing what aspects of uh, the environmental aspects need to be considered, what products and processes do to the environment, and how can we, we work our way through processes which can be environmentally friendly and sustainable. So it's all about learning about efficient conversion. Uh, how do you use renewable fuels? How do you treat your waste? How do you clean up your, uh, your emissions, your gases that may come up from your process? And how do you make the whole process sustainable? And sustainability is not all about how do you make the process carbon neutral or environmentally friendly, but also how do you make the process sustainable economically as well? So it's like techno-economic uh, balance. So seeing how the technology can be developed to give you economic uh, viability as well. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we, we, we develop things in a way which are environmentally friendly, much more greener, but the main driving force, unfortunately, in industry is, is, is the cost. So we have to make sure that it's sustainable in terms of economic figures as well. So um, our quality of life is affected by the products we use, and those are made by a range of processes on an industrial scale. And this is really important to understand, and it's a it's it's a very it's a, a real fundamental backbone of all the commodities we have in society today, and 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 chemical engineering is a very cool discipline, which actually provides the means to develop to deliver these products on the scale that's needed in society today. So the length scales of chemical engineering they they work from things from a molecular level and seeing how. They can be scaled up uh, on, and, and distributed on a global level. So uh, we, as a chemical engineer, you will be learning about how things are happening on a molecular level, what sort of interactions are happening on a molecular level, and how these uh, processes happening on a molecular level can be understood and then put through a range of different processes to, to, to actually take that raw material and convert it into something which is of more interest or more use. And then how those different processes can then be put together to come up with a whole plant level scale of, of carrying out a range of different processes to process a material from a raw material form to a useful um, a product a commodity that would be supplied and used by everyone in their daily use. And so we are interested in seeing how these, these processes in combination can then lead to how a, a, a process which is occurring on plant level, occurring on a plant level, on an industrial scale, and to be able to provide uh, the throughput uh, that's needed for, for delivering the, 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 the products which are needed at the right scale and quality and quantity. So 
as well as um, looking at the process from molecular level, scaling it all up to industrial level. Chemical engineering is focused on seeing how you can develop the pro uh, to look at the process on the product level to make sure it has the right properties. So on your on your right hand side, you see another nice picture of chocolates. I seem to be obsessed with chocolates here a little bit, as you can see from my slides. But it's really try to emphasize that you know, when you are making chocolate, it's it's quite a it's quite a detailed engineering process, and to make sure that you can produce this chocolate at the right sort of uh, consistency is quite critical and so it requires a lot of careful engineering. On your left hand side you see a whole range of different scales of, of materials that are made and these are basically sort of frameworks used for, for catalysts and you could see you can make these, uh, these materials to different scales, different geometries, different porosity uh, and again the processes you use and, and how you scale those up has a real impact on the product level and the quality of the product and the specifications of the product which is produced at the end of the day. So uh, I've mentioned all these things, but at the end of the day, one fundamental thing is, uh, is understanding how what you're doing uh, has a, a global level impact. And to make sure that whatever process is come up, whatever scale up process is used for making products, how can that be environmentally friendly? How can that be um, um, so an, an efficient process and a sustainable process? and importantly, how it can be economically viable as well. So what do chemical engineers do? So they can be working uh, on, an, uh, for example, in an existing process and as a chemical engineer, you can be looking at how uh, uh, to operate a process, how to troubleshoot through a process on an industrial site, or how to improve a process on an industrial site. If the process or product does not exist, a chemical engineering that goes on to do the design for the chemical process. And to be able to do that, you need to be able to, also what chemical engineers do is come up with new designs, so process designs. If a product is known, select the process to make it, to make it. you will be involved in choosing the, the, the process flow sheets and specifying the equipment that consider, consider control and safety around that process as well. You'll also be involved in product design look at how what attributes of the products need to be specified first and choose uh, or design the product to achieve the right specifications. So there's a lot of work involved with chemical engineers we get involved in, in, in looking at process design as well as product design. And in both scenarios, you, one of the key things is you'll be estimating the cost, the profitability of the design and the viability of, of, the, of the process on an industrial scale and its viability economically as well. And to be able to do that, a chemical engineer needs to have key areas where they have knowledge. So have a very good fundamental understanding of the pure sciences, things like chemistry, physics, biochemistry, materials, have a lot of experience and expertise in general engineering. Obviously as a chemical engineer, you'll be developing very core skills in, in your mathematics, as also in, in, in IT skills and having a very good perspective and context of the economic impact of industrial processes as well. And as well as a chemical engineer, one of the things you will learn a lot, a lot about is health, safety and environment, and also picking up key skills like management, entrepreneurship, and, and also learning about foreign languages. A lot of chemical engineers in their, in their careers end up doing a lot of traveling around the world because the, 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 the type, of, type of work you're involved is, in, is normally on a global scale. So why study chemical engineering? It's an interesting discipline. It, it's useful for society. Well, actually it's fundamental for society and, and, and even moving forward, it's even more important in, in understanding chemical, becoming a chemical engineer because they play a key or pivotal role in, in developing sustainable environmentally friendly processes moving forward. Uh, you acquire a, a wide range of uh, skills you can end up going into a many a range of disciplines and careers. So you can become a field engineer, research. A lot of chemical engineering students who graduate go on to, to work in management positions and so forth. And, and there's a lot of opportunity for, for you to travel once you graduate as a chemical engineer. Um, there is a lot of career opportunities outside the discipline. There's no restriction. So, and, and generally, uh, if you look at the statistics, people who uh, study chemical engineering are, are highly employable and, and end up going into very successful careers. 
So some generalizations to try and summarize what chemical engineering is. Scientists make discoveries and acquire knowledge. Many of these discoveries will be useful in the real world. Engineers apply science to design and build things that are used in the real world. So engines, machines, structures, electrical equipment, chemical products. And what you find is chemical engineers uh, are, are basically is a discipline which actually interfaces between the fundamental sciences and engineering. So it's a very, very uh, interesting discipline which gives you a broad exposure to a whole range of different subjects based around science. So a little bit about the Cambridge course. Well, the department recently, um, well, it's not recent, it's a few years ago, has moved to West Cambridge. So you will notice if you look at the map of the, the university, there is uh, a lot of the departments which are, are based around the center of town, but many of the departments, especially the science and engineering courses, are based at something known as the West Cambridge site, which is just slightly out of the city center. Um, the department has recently moved out there and we have a fantastic uh, um, a, a, a building, which is brand new, which has been kitted out with state-of-the-art facilities for, for teaching and, and research. Um, so it's an excellent facilities and hopefully once this pandemic is over and uh, the university is able to offer open days, we should be able to come and visit the, the university and come and see the department in person as well. Um, the, the, it has a very friendly environment, has a, a good staff and student interaction. Um, we, we are quite a small department. We normally have around about 65 students, undergraduates joining each year. And there's roughly about 25 to 30 academics in the department and all of them are fairly young. So the department is quite a lively place, quite an interactive place. The way that the actual department layout is, you could see here, there's, there's a really open plan social area and a lot of the undergraduate students uh, sit down and have their coffees and their lunches there. And, and, and there's an opportunity to mingle with other academic members of staff as well in the department. As well as that, the, the department has a very active uh, undergraduate student uh, society, QCAS, which is a Cambridge University Chemical Engineering Society, and, and they organize a lot of events and talks for, for the current undergraduates there. And a lot of companies which are uh, running recruitment events for, um, for undergraduate recruitment do uh, QCAS works with them quite closely to arrange those events for un current undergraduates within the department. So um, a little bit more about the course. The course is designed to produce graduates that meet the, the needs for modern process industries. So if you were to study the course at Cambridge, you will develop a lot of core skills and technical competency, uh, a lot of transferable skills. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on, on, the, on the course and fundamental principles, principles underpinning the processes and products and ability to cope with scientific advances as well. So you'll be learning about a lot about new uh, technologies and new advances in, in chemical engineering. As well as that, uh, it's being useful. Hopefully the course is very interesting as well. And if you were to uh, wanting to find out a little bit more about the course, I definitely would encourage you to visit the department website where there's a lot more resources available there about the undergraduate course. So a little bit more about the structure of the course. Um, as Katrina mentioned, uh, the undergraduate course is slightly odd. If you were wanting to study chemical engineering, we would, uh, you would have to either do, do uh, your first year as a natural scientist or as an engineer. So you would either apply to chemical engineering via natural sciences or by engineering. And then after the end of your first year, you would then transfer into chemical engineering and continue your undergraduate uh, studies in the Department of Chemical Engineering. This is sometimes referred to as a, the CET1, Chemical Engineering Tripos 1, and CET2A. So this is uh, the second, the third year, but your second year in chemical engineering, so to speak. And after three years of your undergraduates, you can actually graduate with a BA honours uh, degree. However, most of the undergraduates continue on to do the fourth year course and then graduate with a BA honours and an MEng degree at the end of it. So in between your uh, the various years, a uh, uh, lot of students do ask, is there an opportunity to have some work experience 
whilst doing my undergraduate or going on industrial placement. Unfortunately, at Cambridge, most of the courses don't offer this opportunity. In chemical engineering, it's the same thing. But however, uh, um, more than most of the undergraduate students, if not all of them, spend most of their summer vacations between each uh, academic year uh, working on internships. And, and there's huge amounts of opportunities to do that. And all of the students that I've known are who, who I've been a director of studies for have gone on to do uh, vocational work or internships over their summer vacations, which have led on to them having graduate jobs at, at, at many of them going on to do the graduate jobs at the same firms where they've done their internships. So in terms of uh, the, the teaching, um, mo all the undergraduate teaching for chemical engineering is done within the department. So the department itself has three lecture theatres within the building. All the undergraduates have all their undergraduate lectures at, in, at, at the department at, at the same building. Um, as well as that, there is a series of core uh, laboratory practicals that you would do as part of your undergraduate course. And, and within the department, there is also a teaching laboratory where all the practical classes are run for the undergraduates. As well as that, in the department, there is an open plan space uh, with loads of computers. And this gives an opportunity for all the undergraduates to, to sit and work at a workstation within the department to work through any of their exercises or their project works or their assessed work um, and have access to all the computer facilities there. Um, the Cambridge course, in terms of uh, college support, I mean, Katrina has already spoken a little bit about that, as well as the teaching that's done in the department. There is a lot of teaching that the college provides as well in terms of small group teaching and supervisions, uh, and as, as well as the teaching uh, support that, that's given by the colleges. There's also a pastoral care uh, provided by the colleges and all the other types of facilities that the college has. So uh, if you were, to, if I was to summarize this, what happens at Cambridge is you join a college, uh, you're a member of the college, the college provides you with all your facilities such as accommodation, catering, sport, um, as well as um, sort, of a, sort of small group teaching needs uh, and pastoral care. And then the department provides all the academic course. So all your lectures, all your assessments, all your practicals, how you're examined, what degree you're awarded, your degree classification is all done by the departments. But the colleges and department work together in synergy to support the student throughout their undergraduate time at the university. So a little bit more about uh, the course. So in the first year, you would, if you are thinking of applying to chemical engineering, you would have to either apply via engineering or Natsuki. Uh, a lot of students ask me which one's a better route to take. And my advice to them always has been, you pick the route which is most of interest to you. So if you're more interested in learning about your applied sciences, I would definitely encourage you to go by the engineering route, where you would actually in the first year get to learn a little bit more about mechanics, thermodynamics, structural mechanics and materials, uh, and, and, and a lot more maths. Um, however, if you're more interested in the fundamental sciences, then I would definitely uh, advise students to consider the natural sciences route, where you actually spend your first year learning more about the core uh, the science disciplines such as math, chemistry, material science, biology. Um, you'll be learning more about those in more in depth. Plus, you'll be learning a lot more about your maths, uh, mathematics in, in that first year as well. And it's really about your interest, which is which is more that you're interested in. And that's the route I would advise you to take to, to kind of suit your needs. The really nice thing about the Cambridge course is there's a lot of flexibility. So, so students, you know, at the end of their first year, if they've decided that actually that they, they want to specialize in, a, in, a, in another subject, uh, which isn't quite the one that they had applied for, there is a within reason opportunity to do that. So the reason why uh, students go via engineering or Natsuki in their first year is that it's after the end of their first year, if they decide, well, actually, I really enjoyed learning more about chemistry and I want to continue with chemistry, you don't have to transfer to chemical engineering. You can continue uh, and, and your degree in natural sciences and specialize more in chemistry. Likewise, if, if you went by the engineering route at the end of the first year, if you decide that actually you're more interested in engineering as a discipline and you want to specialize in a different type of engineering discipline, then you can continue your degree in the engineering department and specialize in mechanical engineering and so forth and so forth. 
So the nice thing is it gives you that flexibility uh, if you do come and study at Cambridge. Um, if you were to continue into your second year and do chemical engineering, well, the, the course in the, in the second year is actually quite, quite split into two different sections. So the first section is there's a lot of core material that everyone who joins the, 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 the course does, which are either from natural sciences or engineering. And there's a sort of a core material that only the engineering students get to learn, which is more fundamental chemistry, just to make sure that their chemistry knowledge is up to scratch. And, and likewise with the natural scientists, they get to do a set of core lecture course material, which is all about mechanical engineering, to make sure that their knowledge and, and, and context behind engineering topics is far more broader than what they had already learned about in their first year. And the whole idea is by the end of your second year, once you started chemical engineering, all the undergraduates, either by engineering or Natsuki, have got the same sort of core sort of knowledge and skills to pro progress through their degree. As well as uh, the lectures, there are some uh, assessed laboratory practicals uh, and assessed coursework that students have to do. And as well as that, there are a load of transferable skill workshops that are offered as part of the second year course for undergraduate students. And when you move on into the third year uh, in, in, in the chemical engineering course, um, there that's really where you start learning some more sort of fundamental chemical engineering. And you'll be learning about processes, uh, concepts such as thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, uh, corrosion and materials, also about process operations, process systems, and, and also learning more about some enabling topics such as maths and so forth. As well as the core course material, there are some assessed exercises, coursework, which students have to do. And at the end of the, the second term, the undergraduates um, uh, have their exams, and then they spend the whole of the third term doing a major design project. And the whole idea of the design project is, is really, is, is to get students to start practicing their, their, their engineering skills. Uh, so what would happen is you'll be put into teams, uh, you'll be presented with a, 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 a design problem where you'll be told to come up with a process design uh, for, for carrying out a, a certain production. Uh, last year, uh, for example, um, it was looking at how you can take wheat and, and actually produce uh, bioethanol from it and look at the process involved in that and what sort of um, uh, considerations need to be taken in, uh, in, uh, taken into place. And then more importantly, is the process uh, economically viable? Is it sustainable? Is it environmentally friendly? But through that whole process, you learn all the key skills that you need to apply as a chemical engineer in, in a real uh, sort of, uh, um, sort of uh, industrial environment. So if you do decide after your, your three years to continue uh, with the master's, then what would happen in the fourth year, you would carry, there's an opportunity to study some core lecture material, which is quite fundamental or based around sustainability and chemical product design. And then as well as that, there's a whole range of optional courses, which are sort of much more kind of um, specialized uh, in different sort of disciplines in chemical engineering. And students will get to choose between those different courses to pick the ones that they want to learn about in more detail, and then be able to be examined on those courses as well. As well as that, another component of the fourth year is that you spend the whole academic year doing a research project. This really involves you spending time with one of the academics in their research labs and working quite closely with one of their PhDs and postdoc students on one of the research topics that they're currently looking into. And these research projects can be very broad. They can be from looking at some computational modeling type projects with applications in in, in sort of uh, optimization and so forth, look or to looking at sort of biotechnology type of applications uh, and research projects where you're actually looking at cell culturing and, and seeing how, how um, different cell lines can, can be studied to, 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 to monitor disease conditions and processes that are happening on a biological scale. As well as that, you could also be looking at a more traditional kind of combustion or catalysis group to do some sort of research in combustion technology and catalysis. So there's a huge range available for undergraduates when they come to study at, at the department. One of the key other things I would advise all undergraduate uh, students who are thinking of applying to Cambridge is to look at the, the various uh, research themes uh, and disciplines 
that the, the academics are, are working in and it will give you a, a real taste for the depth and, and, and breadth of, of, the, of the sort of uh, research areas which are being explored uh, in, in the discipline right now. So the Cambridge course uh, has very uh, has very close industrial links. Uh, we work very closely with many uh, big 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 companies, and these are just some of them. And they provide a lot of support to the department and are very proactive in recruiting undergraduates as well uh, in their graduate programs. So in terms of employment, um, this is just to really give you an idea of uh, where chemical engineers have ended up in the last five years. Um, a lot of them go on to have careers in petro, uh, petrochemicals, understandably, but a lot of them are now moving into the pharmaceutical sector. Um, with the current situation with the pandemic, COVID-19, one of the biggest demands is, is, is production of vaccinations, vaccines. And, uh, you know, fundamental to that is chemical engineering, is, you know, how do you come up with processes to produce vaccines at such large scales? Uh, and on, on a, for global demand as well. Um, a lot of uh, graduates go on into the food and consumer industry, and you could see uh, there's a substantial amount of the, our graduates who go on to become uh, engineering consultants uh, and going to manufacture. And as well as that, you could see there is a large group of students who, which continue on into going into uh, higher degrees, such as PhDs and master's program to specialize and, and do more research focused degrees. And, and, and there is a large proportion of our undergraduates who go on into the finance and management consultancy sector. So hopefully this gives you an idea of, of, this, of, the, of the, uh, the, the, the scope for different types of uh, careers you can have uh, after you graduate with a degree in chemical engineering. All right, so applying to read chemical engineering, applicants choose which first year subject that they would like to prefer to study. So key stages involved is you first need to decide whether you want to apply via engineering or NATSKI. And if you do apply uh, via engineering NATSKI, it's really important to notice that, note that on the UCAS form, you, you can actually specify uh, that you want to apply to chemical engineering via natural sciences or engineering. Like I mentioned, both these routes provide equal opportunity for preparation for the course, and it's really down to personal choice. Um, if you are, like Katrin has mentioned, if you are applying via natural sciences, it's essential that you are studying maths and chemistry. If you are studying further maths or physics, that's great, that's desirable, but really uh, to meet the entry requirements, you should be doing A-level maths and chemistry. If you're applying for engineering, uh, engineering course generally asks that students uh, do maths and physics. However, if you are thinking of applying for chemical engineering, then we would stipulate that you also do A-level chemistry as well, because we want to make sure that our undergraduates have some fundamental understanding in chemistry as a topic area. Now, I mentioned that there's a lot of flexibility in the course. The students uh, are often allowed to change course after their first year. So even though we get a lot of students applying to the chemical engineering uh, and uh, spend their first year doing engineering and natural sciences, um, we find that some of them actually after their first year decide that they wanna continue in natural sciences or engineering. But likewise, it's also, we have many students who had originally applied for engineering and natural sciences. And after spending a year studying that course, I realized actually they're not really interested in pursuing the fundamental sciences, such if you're doing natural sciences, I want to do something much more applied and end up applying to chemical engineering, transferring over to chemical engineering. So there is a lot of flexibility there. So, um, you know, just, just to kind of emphasize that by picking a certain course, it doesn't limit you at Cambridge. You do have the opportunity to, to chop and change the course to a certain degree to suit your interests in, uh, uh, as you develop and as you progress through your undergraduate course. So um, just some more information about applying to Cambridge, about 75% of the chemical engineering applicants are, are usually interviewed in December. Um, as Katrin mentioned, usually the interviews last for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, the, the, the questions that are asked at interviews, independent of which college you apply to, will be all academic focused. So it's all about um, your academic interest in the subject and particularly how well, how, how, how good are you at applying what you've learned at school to look at scientific problems that you may not have come across before. So 
what we're looking for is, do you really understand the material taught at school? Can you think through the problems presented to you? Will you do well in the course in three years time? So we really want to make sure that students who can keep up with the academic work are the ones which are selected for the course at Cambridge. So if you want to find out, I think I'm at the end of my talk now. So if you have any other questions, we can pick them up in the Q&A session. But I just thought I'd point out the, the, some useful links. Uh, if you have any further questions about uh, the, the department and specific to related to the chemical engineering and biotechnology, please do feel free to get in touch with the department at admissions at, at, at ceb.cam.ac.uk. Uh, and as I mentioned, there is a lot of resources available on the department website, as well as the, the university prospectus. So thank you very much for your time. So I'm going to hand this over back to Catriona now. We're going to be hearing now from um, Polina, who is one of our um, current students, and she's going to talk to you about student life. Um, so my name is Polina. I come from Russia, and I am currently in my second year uh, studying chemical engineering at Downing. I have absolutely loved my time here so far, and I'm really excited to share some of my experiences with you as part of the student life talk. So I thought I would first start by telling you a little bit about why I decided to apply to study chemical engineering and what it was about uh, the subject and the course that really uh, in interested me in it. So first of all, um, I really like the fact that it was so um, multidisciplinary, um, uh, particularly because when I was doing my A-levels back at school, I was studying chemistry, physics, maths, uh, and also further maths. And I really enjoyed all of the subjects that I was doing. And I didn't feel like I wanted to uh, drop any of them. And I really wanted to continue them uh, further on in my educational journey. Um, so. For me, chemical engineering really encompassed all uh, three of those subjects uh, really well. And that's kind of what really sparked my interest in the course initially. Um, so by nature of it being such a multidisciplinary course, it will let you learn and apply a really broad range of skills that you'll be able to use in many different situations in the future. And this means that after graduating uh, the career possibilities are really quite endless. And um, as previously mentioned, you can follow either, either follow traditional career path or go into academia or consulting or even law or finance. And I really like the fact that I uh, really had a lot of opportunities uh, to choose freely after I graduated. So another thing that really sparked my interest in chemical engineering was when I was researching um, a little bit more about the uh, course in general and also kind of what it encompasses. And I found from my research that chemical engineering really does touch everything around us. And I really like that as a chemical engineer, I would have an opportunity to have a positive impact on the world around us. And studying chemical engineering, uh, eventually you'll have the opportunity to really shape the world around you, uh, whether it's by tackling technical, societal, or environmental challenges, and you'll be able to address real world, pro real world problems. And I really like that that's something that I would be able to do in the future uh, with what I had learned. Um, and specifically why I wanted to study chemical engineering at Cambridge, uh, first of all, was the opportunity to do a year of general engineering. Uh, for me, that was kind of the preferred option uh, and something that I was a little bit more interested in over natural sciences. Um, and I really liked the fact that I could kind of explore a broad range of engineering disciplines without really having to commit to anything and having chemical engineering to always fall back upon if I found that I didn't really like anything that much uh, in terms of whether it was mechanical or structural or electrical engineering that we were covering in our first year. Um, and after gaining a really broad understanding of all of the different topics covered in first year, I actually found that the courses and the lectures that I uh, liked best really aligned well with what I would be studying in my second year. Uh, as a chemical engineer. And so for me, it really just confirmed that I had made the right decision um, in applying for chemical engineering specifically. And overall, it was a really great experience and I'm really glad that I didn't have to specialize straight away. 
I also really like uh, that the chemical engineering year group at Cambridge is quite small uh, relative to the engineering course and also relative to courses at other universities. And it means that there's a lot more individual attention uh, to each student. And you also really get to know all of these students in your year group and in the department really well. And also there's uh, supervisions at Cambridge, which I'm sure you will have heard about. And those are really helpful in boosting understanding of material and kind of resolving any questions. And finally, there's also the added bonus of the department being nice and new and with really great uh, facilities. So moving on to what a typical week looks like for me, well, looked like for me last year and looks like for me now. So as I mentioned, I did engineering last year and I could have done natural sciences, but that was kind of my choice. And this year I'm doing chemical engineering. So the schedule does vary quite a lot. And I've tried to kind of pick a week that is uh, an average in terms of contact hours and the types of things that you might get up to uh, while you're here. So on the left hand side, uh, we've got uh, my first year schedule and as you can see there's quite a few lectures on there as uh, there are uh, in chemical engineering this year. I would say on average um, as an engineering student in first year you'll probably have around 10 to 11 lectures a week uh, and this year it has ranged um, quite a lot, maybe from nine to 14 a week. Um, and that depends on where you are in the year and what kind of lecture courses you have um, and a lot of other things. Um, and typically the slots for these are quite fixed. So usually they'll either be at nine or at 10 um, and run for two hours. Um, obviously this year with things being online, it's been a little bit different, but last year the slots were fixed and the lecture courses would just vary over the year. Uh, another thing that you can spot on my schedule are some of the compulsory labs. Um, so on the left hand side, they're in pink and on the right hand side, there's one on Wednesday um, and it's a Zoom lab because it was online. Um, but last year, we obviously had the opportunity to do a lot of these in person. Um, and typically, I would probably have around um, one to three labs a week. Um, and this year, um, it's a little bit less, I'd say maybe one a week, uh, one every other week, depending on uh, whether you take natural sciences or engineering in your first year, as uh, you do kind of take slightly different modules in second year so that everybody um, is caught up and eventually by the end of second year um, kind of has learned the same material. So as an engineer coming into chemical engineering, you also get to do uh, some physical chemistry labs. So this year I had a, a little bit more uh, labs than the natural sciences students. Um, so another thing that you can spot on there are some supervision. So on the left hand side, they're in yellow. On the right, they're also in pink. And typically, you'll probably have around one to four supervisions a week. Um, and it can vary a lot throughout the year. And depending on where you are in the term, usually they start off uh, as one or two a week and then build up towards the end of term. Um, and this year it's been roughly the same. Um, I would say maybe my busiest week was five supervisions, but that's also quite rare. And essentially what a supervision is, is just a discussion around the problems given in an examples paper. And an examples paper is essentially a set of past paper questions on a specific topic. And they're usually around maybe 10 questions long, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is quite common to spend a few hours working through these problems. Um, and then also you'll talk about um, just the topics you've covered in the course and other broader uh, concepts more generally if you have any questions for your supervisor. And that supervisor will typically be somebody who is a specialist in their field and it'll probably be related to the course uh, that you're studying and the course for which they are supervising. And supervisions are really unique to Cambridge and they're an excellent way to kind of boost your understanding of content. Uh, so I would definitely say that um, they've really helped me so far, uh, and it is really recommended to make the most of them. And another th final thing that you can spot on here, uh, and on the left hand side, um, uh, there is a industrial placements workshop on a Tuesday. Um, and last year we had quite a few of those, um, and they were kind of aimed to help us um, understand what it's like to write a CV, fill out an application form, etc. Um, just preparing us for uh, the industrial placements requirement. So in engineering, um, you have to complete a certain number of weeks 
um, in an industrial placement. In chemical engineering, there isn't a requirement for this, um, but it's obviously really, really helpful. So I found these sessions really useful in helping me kind of understand how um, to do all of these things. And on the right hand side, you'll also see a microbrewery session on the right, and that's linked to some of the exercises um, that we do uh, in chemical engineering. Uh, so this one specifically was about beer making and in relation to our biotechnology course. So it does look quite busy just based off the schedule, um, but with effective time management, there's more than enough time left over to spend doing things you enjoy. Okay, so um, in my first year doing engineering, um, I had a very hands-on experience, which was really great. There were a lot of labs mixed in together with lectures and the lecture courses split off into four general engineering fields. So this was mechanical engineering, structural engineering coupled together with materials and also electrical engineering. And then there was also a uh, maths course and a computing element that was then assessed on uh, through coursework and on the exam. Um, and as I said, there's a really good balance between lectures and compulsory labs and also coursework tasks. And some of the things that you can get up to in your first year as an engineer, in addition to lectures, include a Lego Mindstorms activity, a SolidWorks roller, roller coaster simulation, a structural design project where you build a bridge or a cantilever from steel or aluminum angles and sheet metal. Uh, there's also the integrated electrical project where you design and build an AM radio. And you also get to create a Python flood warning system. And there's also a product uh, design coursework as well. Um, so Cambridge terms are quite short and also very fast paced. And when it comes to engineering, there's definitely a significant step up from A level. And it can take some adjusting too. But with time, you learn to manage your time more effectively. And from experience, I can say that despite the many contact hours, uh, it is still possible to have a huge amount of fun and do many, many things outside of studying. So in terms of uh, chemical engineering and what I've been up to so far this year, um, the topics that have been covered in lectures, as have been previously mentioned, have included process calculations, uh, fluid mechanics, which is a personal favorite of mine, um, heat and mass transfer, biotechnology, sustainability, and a few others as well. And then there's also uh, been a coursework element as well, which is composed of labs, computing, and exercises. Um, so in terms of uh, labs relative to uh, first year engineering, there's definitely uh, less of them, but they're also very different in nature. Um, and they also have a uh, report that you have to write afterwards, which actually contributes towards your grade at the end of the year. Um, likewise, with computing, um, in first year, we looked at Python, whereas this year, um, we've looked at MATLAB and Unisim, which is a process uh, simulation software. And with exercises, they're really just an opportunity to kind of apply the knowledge and skills that you have learned into a kind of more uh, open-ended uh, exercise. And some of the ones that we've been up to this year have included, as I mentioned, uh, designing a beer. Um, there's also been a sustainability exercise and a fluid mechanics exercise where we have to do some calculations uh, based on a, a flow in a process. So, I thought I would talk a little bit more about uh, what it's like to live and study at Downing and why it is that I had applied there specifically. So for me, one of the most important factors when choosing a place where I potentially spend the next four years uh, living there uh, was location. So Downing is a central college, which means that it's conveniently located to pretty much all of the necessities such as Sainsbury's and John Lewis, and also it's right next door to the engineering department. And so far I found this extremely convenient as almost everything I could need is within a five to 15 minute walk, meaning that I haven't actually needed to get a bike so far. And despite being so centrally located, Downing actually has so much open space and there's usually very few tourists around college, which is quite nice as well. And in my opinion, Downing also has some of the best accommodation, which is guaranteed for the whole three years of your studies. And all of the accommodation is also on site, meaning in college, uh, which creates a really great sense of community um, because all of the college members live together. 
On arrival, I was also pleasantly surprised by the range of facilities at Downing. There's everything from a library to a dining hall um, and a gym all catered towards student life. Another thing which I didn't know about before coming here was the college parent scheme. So this is essentially a buddy scheme where uh, two or three incoming first years uh, who are college children um, are paired with two to three students going into their second year uh, who are college parents. And typically these second years are studying the same or similar subjects to the first years. For me, this was extremely helpful as not only did it give me an opportunity to get to know some of the people that I would be living and studying with, um, I, but it also provided me with a person beyond my director of studies to whom I could come with uh, subject related questions or advice. And this is just one of the many elements of the extensive support network at Downing, uh, which is complemented by your director of studies, your personal tutor, and also the college nurse. So some of the things that you uh, can get up to in your free time at Cambridge uh, can involve uh, joining a society. And personally, I think that it's a really great way to meet new people and try new things. Um, and there are quite literally hundreds to choose from. Uh, so there's, if there's something you're interested in, as niche as it is, um, there's probably a society for it. Uh, personally, I have gone to events organized by the Russian, engineering, Spanish, and many, many other societies. Uh, additionally, each college will also have their own society. So, for example, Downing has its own dramatic society and a music society, as well as a few subject-based societies. And aside from cultural, departmental, food and drink, or games and hobby societies, there are also many opportunities to get involved in sport. Um, so this can be by representing your college uh, or the university in various levels of commitment. In my first term at Cambridge, I had the opportunity to try something new, and that was rowing. Rowing is quite a popular sport in Cambridge, but there's absolutely no pressure to try if you don't want to. However, seeing as Downing has its own boathouse with a rowing tank and other really great facilities, um, I was really tempted to try out. Um, and I had a huge amount of fun in my first term training, doing races, and going to many boat club organized events. And I'm really glad I tried it out as I have had so many new experiences and met so many wonderful new people through it. But if there's something that you're interested in and there isn't a society for it, you're always more than welcome to start your own. Along with one of my friends who's also Russian, we actually started our own small Russian society in Downing. Um, open to anyone who appreciates the culture or language. Um, and a lot of the time we would just go to events organized by the university Russian society together or just meet up to eat Russian candies and watch Soviet cartoons. Um, but the main takeaway from all of this is that there's definitely something for everyone. Another way that you can spend your time with friends, eating and socializing is by going to formals. But these are by no means compulsory. Formals are typically a three course dinner, which is served by candlelight or in very dim lighting, uh, which happens on select days of the week. Uh, there's usually a dress code and you're expected to wear a gown. And formals are quite unique to Cambridge. And um, it's a really nice way to celebrate your birthday or a special occasion uh, with your friends. A lot of people also attend these with their families when they visit. And formals are also often themed, which is quite fun. Uh, last year, uh, back when it was possible, I attended a Halloween themed formal uh, and also a purple themed Women's Day formal. And um, typically uh, people wear themed clothing and the food is also made according to the theme as well. Um, so it's a lot of fun to go with these, to these with your friends. Uh, however, if society sport and formals just aren't for you, there are also many other things that you can do to get uh, involved in Cambridge such as, for example, uh, Cambridge theater, charity work. Uh, you can attend a variety of events such as the charity fashion show. Uh, you can visit the botanical gardens, uh, which are definitely worth a visit. Um, and you can also take on leadership roles within college or in the wider university. Um, I've actually had the role of international officer uh, for the last year on Downing's uh, JCR committee. And I really enjoyed the experience and I actually ended up reapplying um, for a different role and I'm now the events officer. Uh, but it's something that I never thought I would do before coming to Cambridge as this has not really been something um, uh, that I had done before. And I 
was really glad that I applied for the position and I've had a really great experience so far. And there's also many, many other things uh, that you can do uh, whilst you're at Cambridge. So I thought I would finish off by talking about some of the kind of concerns that I had before coming to Cambridge um, and kind of advice that I would give myself having uh, spent a, a year and a bit here already. Um, so for me as an international student, the main concern I had before coming to Cambridge um, was what the people would be like and whether or not I would fit in and feel at home. And upon arriving, I was really surprised by how friendly and welcoming everyone was and actually how easy it was to make friends. And since coming here, I've met so many people from different cultures and backgrounds, which made me realize that fitting in wasn't something I should have worried about in the first place. Another concern that I had was being far away from family, um, being an international student and going to a new country. Uh, and that was quite scary for me. Uh, but I found that homesickness is something that a lot of people uh, experience irrespective of where they come from. And knowing that I was not alone was actually a really big relief. And the strong sense of community and the support network at Downing made me feel a lot more at home. And a few pieces of advice I would give to myself, uh, looking back at my time at Downing, uh, would be to worry less about things out of my control, trust my gut when it comes to making decisions, and also to not be afraid to try new things. So looking back, I'm really, really glad I made the decision to come study here. Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much, um, Polina, and thank you, um, Cam, as well, uh, for your presentation. Um, we're now going to um, answer the questions that you've been submitting. Um, so if you have any more questions, please do submit them via the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, but I'm going to ask a few of them now uh, to Cam and Polina. So Cam, we'll start with you. Um, someone's asking, would maths, chemistry and further maths be an acceptable subject combination for the natural sciences route? That's absolutely fine. Um, it, uh, for natural sciences, uh, the requirement is maths uh, and, and another science uh, with, with, with other science subjects. And for chemical engineering, it's maths and chemistry. So if you are doing further maths, maths and chemistry, uh, you will meet the entry requirements for, for, for chemical engineering via natural sciences. The only thing I would advise that a candidate is um, to really kind of do their homework around the natural science admissions assessment, because in that assessment, there are questions which are uh, topics based. So the, you have an option of choosing, you have to all answer the, the math questions, but then you can choose between the physics, chemistry or biology question. And if you are only doing A-level chemistry, you're kind of limiting yourself to just answering the chemistry questions. Although the, the questions are based around what knowledge, you know, uh, uh, what knowledge you've gained through your GCSEs as well, um, but I would definitely advise them to practice uh, uh, the natural science assessment papers to make sure that they can work through those and, and, and compete competitively in the exams. Brilliant, thank you. Um, there was another question about how to prepare uh, for the natural sciences um, admissions assessment. Um, what else would you say? And I guess for the engineering one as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, maybe Polina could answer this as well, but uh, I, uh, the key bit of advice I'd give anyone is to just go on the university website. There's lots of past papers there, work through them uh, and the more practice you can get uh, in doing some past papers, the more familiar you become with the format of the test and understand the sort of uh, level you need to be performing at. Uh, I don't know, what, what did you do, Polina, when you were preparing for your assessments? What was your best bit of advice? For any I mean, I did exactly the same thing. I went and searched for some past papers um, and went through those. Uh, there weren't a th that many, so I kind of used them sparingly, but there's also a lot of really useful websites out there that kind of give you uh, a taste of what a um, complex engineering problem can look like. Um, and I also just revised a lot of kind of mechanics um, because I kind of had a feeling that the engineering admissions assessment would be, uh, have a lot of them. Um, so for me, it was a lot of maths and physics revision, um, not necessarily so much chemistry because I was doing the engineering assessment. Um, but then I revised chemistry for my interview because I came up later. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, thank you both. Um, Cam, how many people on average manage to get into Downing uh, for chemical engineering via uh, the natural sciences route, this person's asking, but in general, how many do we take? 
Okay, so um, year to year that has varied, but on average, we, we look to offer two places for chemical engineering, bio-natural sciences, and, and two places for engineering, chemical engineering, bioengineering. But uh, applications vary each year. And one of the key things um, is that at Downing, we are very, very strict about is we want to make sure the applicants, which are the most competitive ones, independent of which subject they apply to, end up with an offer from the college. So depending on the, the strength of the field across different subjects, uh, those numbers can fluctuate a little bit. But on average, we're looking to make one or two offers for chemical engineering, either via natural sciences or engineering. Brilliant. Um, there's a lot of questions about sort of uh, the differences uh, between the two routes. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say are the main differences uh, between the two? I, I mean, like I mentioned in my slides, uh, the main difference is, is the sort of core fundamental subjects that you cover in your first year. Uh, in terms of uh, how it does that have an impact on your on the admissions process, that's that's irrelevant. You know, you have an equal opportunity to being admitted to the college if you apply via the engineering or natural sciences route, um, and 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 the experience offered by going via either route doesn't put you at any advantage or disadvantage. Um, but in terms of uh, content, it really depends on what you're interested in. If you're more interested in more applied sciences, then I would definitely recommend to the chem and fire engineering route. If you're really interested in still learning more about your fundamental sciences and want to learn about chemistry, physics, biology in more depth, then, then the natural sciences route is the route I would, I'd advise candidates about. It's really down to personal choice, you know. Yeah, and I think Polina touched on that as well in, in, in her talk. Yeah. Um, brilliant, thank you. Um, what maths topics in A-level maths and further maths are relevant uh, to the course? Okay, I did read that question. I, I'd scratch my head a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, generally speaking, you know, you're any, you know, a lot of pure maths mechanics is, is relevant to the course. Uh, it, it, does, it does say on the website that maths uh, is a requirement, not further maths, but if you are doing further maths, it, it, is, it, is, it is something that we would recommend. Um, but, uh, you, you know, you are looking at sort of pure maths, you know, generally across the, the different subjects in pure maths that you need to have good skills in. Um, you spend a lot of time uh, applying your mathematical skill sets to, to look at problems, to look at uh, processes and, and doing calculations for optimization uh, of, of a process and so forth. So having good mathematical skills is quite key. I don't know, is there anything else you'd like add to that, Polina? Um, I would say if you can take further maths, I would do it um, just because it's less of a shock going into the kind of the first year maths course. Um, and it really kind of helps you ease in a little bit because you don't have to um, kind of do the crash course of further maths, which is pretty much what they do in first year engineering. At least the first term is pretty much a level further maths summarized into uh, eight weeks. <laughs> so if you can do that and you're willing to do that, then by all means, but I would, I found that it was so helpful that I had already kind of covered a lot of those topics in my further maths course. So I would say pretty much everything that I had covered in maths and further maths has come up in some kind of way. Brilliant. Um, Cam, we've got one student um, who was not able to take uh, further maths because uh, it wasn't offered at their sixth form. Um, they're asking, is it still possible to make a competitive application without further maths? Uh, no, I was just going to mention that uh, the university recognizes that many students uh, uh, probably won't have the, the, the right resources or support at school to study further maths. A lot of schools have this problem where not many students want to study further maths or are able to study further maths. Uh, at a level and therefore they won't be able to offer the resources and teaching needs to support those students so uh, this is why the university website clearly stipulates that further maths is not a requirement for, for engineering or chemical engineering uh, or, or natural sciences in fact uh, but we, we if someone has the opportunity to do it uh, and they can do it we encourage them to do it but if they haven't done it it does not put their application at any disadvantage most of our, you know, we get a large pool of applicants who apply to us who haven't done further maths at A-level. And, and, you know, there are quite a few of those which are 
successful in uh, receiving an offer from the college. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, there's also questions around taking um, four A levels and what the entry requirements would be if they were doing four. Do you want to touch on that briefly? Okay, so um, uh, a lot of students ask this question: uh, Does it does it give me an advantage if I'm doing four A levels? Um, just just to be very clear, the university entry requirements stipulates that you should be doing three A levels. Uh, that is our requirement for entry. Our offers that we, we send out at Downing is based on students achieving three A levels at two A stars and an A grade. Uh, if you're applying for chemical engineering, we will be most likely looking for students who have got an A star in maths and chemistry with an A in another science subject. Um, uh, if you're doing four A levels, that's great. And we definitely, I would definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, like Pauline has touched on, a lot of the courses in Cambridge are quite sort of compact and they and they you know you like you just mentioned you do the further a level maths course in, in eight weeks you know so or you're trying to pick out all the fundamental parts there so by actually doing a fourth a level all you're doing is you're putting yourself through a much more rigorous academic um, um, kind of a, a learning experience for yourself while you're doing your a levels and all that's going to do is help you prepare better for university life where your academic workload is only going to go up so if you have an opportunity to do four levels, I definitely encourage you to do it if you can. Uh, but likewise, if, you, if you're not doing four A-levels, it doesn't put your application at any disadvantage at all. Uh, and our offers are certainly not based on people achieving four A-level grades. It will clearly stipulate that for three A-levels. Brilliant, thank you. Um, question uh, to start with you Polina um what kind of books or documentaries about chemical engineering would you recommend so I think this is going back to the super curricular stuff I was talking about have you got anything in mind or that you um so there is a website I believe um with a few recommended books at least there was one when I was applying um back um a few years two years ago um and it had a list of recommended books for engineering uh, which i felt quite helpful so i think i picked out um invention by design by henry petrovsky from that that was quite interesting and then i also read um uh four laws that drive the universe by peter atkins that was quite a good read and it was just a base basically about uh, the laws of thermodynamics um it's quite a short book as well um so it wasn't too overwhelming and it was written in a really kind of understanding uh and it, it was allowed me to understand it reasonably well whilst i was at six four so i wouldn't recommend reading anything too lengthy but if you can find something short that you actually find interesting um it's definitely worth a read i didn't watch any documentaries so can't really speak about that specifically uh, but there are a lot of really good books out there um just to kind of assess what you actually might be interested in um in general as well yeah, brilliant. Have you got anything um, to add, Cam? I mean, no, I mean, what Polina's just said there is, is, is sort of pretty much spot on. There is a lot of uh, literature that is um, uh, published on the university website, on the department website. So if you go to the chemical engineering department, there is some uh, links there to um, uh, suggested further readings. Um, again, uh, as well as reading uh, literature, it's always good to, to, to go on to things like TED Talks and look up uh, discussions and debates or, or talks presented in, in topical areas. It's, it's really about reinforcing your, your, your knowledge, your broader knowledge around the subject area is what we're trying to encourage. And, and the key thing is, is to just try to, to try and piece it together to see what you're learning at A-level, at school, at college, how is that applied to in a broader context in real life, in real applications, and how it all links together and comes together is what we're really trying to get you to to try and learn about and understand. And that really just helps to get you prepared uh, and, and be much more well-informed about the subject that you want to apply to. Great, thank you. Um, I think we have time uh, for one more question. So I apologize if we haven't got to your question. Um, what sort of projects do students undertake in the fourth year? Oh, this is the research projects, yes? So uh, I, th this very broad. Um, so I'll give you an example. You may have a student who's interested in, in renewable energy 
And there, there is um, certainly my research is all around bioenergy. So there will probably be a project available for students to come and learn about uh, what kind of processes can be developed in, in, uh, in microbial fuel cells, what kind of studies can be done to improve our understanding of uh, electrochemical processes with, with, with different types of bacteria, photosynthetic bacteria, for example. So that's in one project. Another one, if you're interested in biotechnology, um, there is a research group which is, uh, a, a, is looking at how you can use optical techniques to study biological processes. So uh, for example, Alzheimer's, one of the key things that scientists have realized is that there's all these fibers, these um, poly polymeric fibers, amyloid fibers, which form around um, um, uh, sort of um, cells in, in within the brain, which, which is sort of related to Alzheimer's. So there's a group which is working on developing fundamental optical techniques to study the, the, the kind of growth of these, uh, these fibroids and how they then can be kind of inhibited uh, by, by various processes is also being studied. And then another example is combustion. How do you look at traditional combustion techniques? How can you make them more efficient? You know, fluidized beds, for example, what kind of uh, things can be developed and understood about uh, combustion processes occurring in fluidized systems as well. So these are just some examples, uh, but there's loads. The best thing is to go on the department website and just read around the, the research uh, areas that each of the academics are interested in because the research projects will be based around those sorts of topics. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so we are out of time uh, for any more questions. Um, if you haven't had your question answered, um, please do email me and then I will get back um, to you with an answer from Polina or from um, Cam. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Polina and Cam, for your time and for your presentations. Thank you uh, to you at home for watching and joining in um, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.